Hi. Oh, it's been a while, no? It's Wednesday already. <laughs> okay, <coughs> now last Sunday, I had this really, really, really interesting Google Meet with a dear friend, Jane Po, who's a web developer. And a small group of faculty member, relatives, and friends. No? Now, Jane and I are both worried about online instruction and how, it, how we have observed it's going to be delivered, both here in the USA and here. No? So one of the assignments she gave me was, um, I, I, I tried to figure out what activities I do f in face-to-face -face classes that I want to port over to online teaching. No? So I made this chart. No? Now, okay, now I gotta find out where it is on my display. Uh, okay. <coughs> mm. Right, now, <coughs> first old activity is a welcome session. No? Usually, it's done face to face in the classroom. No? And uh, you need physical presence. No? Now, <coughs> Online, no, I was figuring the way to do that is via teleconference or Google Meet or Zoom or whatever, no. Trouble is, it uses a lot of data, no. So, if I ever do this, no, I, I, I thought I'd probably do it only once or twice, one at the beginning and one at the end, no, so that my students don't run out of load. Okay, and second one, I was thinking about attendance. Now, what is the, what constitutes attendance, no, in online, no? That's something I haven't really figured out, no? So, I'll, I'll, I'm still thinking about it, no? For lectures, no, in the old mode, it's done face-to-face -face in the classroom. It usually lasts anywhere from, uh, what, 40 to 45 minutes, okay? Because in UP, for example, our classes are all an hour and a half, no? <coughs> well, <coughs> I thought, and I've been, I've been observing a lot of suggestions, uh, the replacement of that would be what's called a micro-lecture, no? Now, a micro-lecture of about 10 to 15 minutes Pretty much like what I'm doing here on my vlog, no? Can either be pre-recorded, on-demand video, no? And put on YouTube or Facebook, or it can be audio only in SoundCloud, or I can stream it live on YouTube or Facebook, okay? Now, <coughs> class participation it's usually done face-to-face -face in the classroom. No? But instead of that, I figured, why don't I, just do for, uh, why don't I just use a forum discussion? What are these threaded forums? No? I can use either the Uvle, you know, which is our learning management system in UP, or even Facebook. Or <laughs> if I'm really up to it, I can put up my own web forum, but that's a lot of work. No? If I have to add as, act as teacher moderator, that's a lot of work. One of my usual requirements every semester is a one-page ref weekly reflection paper. This is usually done hardbound, but that's easy to submit because, <coughs> that's easy to port over because I can do that via electronic submission, either Uble or email or something, no? Exams in the classroom, I haven't figured that, that, that one out yet, but there's going to have to be some kind of, no? exam or quiz to m measure how much the student has retained. Um, yeah, I usually have a group final research project, which is composed of two parts. One is an in-class presentation, and the other one's a hard copy final term paper. Now, I'm thinking this could still be done online, but in much smaller groups. Usually, the groups that I usually work with are about three to four, but uh, in our guidelines, we were s it was suggested that we, I we only use groups of two, no? So, <coughs> this kind of presentation, no, 
can either be done in many forms. No? Uh, if they have the facility to do it, they could pre-record it live, stream on video, and put it on YouTube, and I can watch it. Or it can be some kind of electronic submission. No? But so there are many ways in which they can submit the results of their research. No? And then a synoptic final meeting, which will probably be teleconferencing, but it's just optional. Just so I get to see their face. It's <laughs> hard to see if they can see their face. We can't completely uh, disconnect ourselves visually. <coughs> so that was what's going on. Okay? That's what's, what's going on in my head. Now, what Jane suggested that could possibly solve my concern for data consumption you know, is a platform called the Progressive Web App. You know? Now, if you've done in, involved in development work, you've probably heard about it and probably done it before. You know? In a sense, it's a website because it lives in a browser like Chrome or Safari or Firefox or whatever. You know? But according to Jane, it behaves like a standalone app or program. The exciting feature is that it use, makes use of um, caching technologies. So you can walk into a Wi-Fi hotspot, let's say go to town, <laughs> go to a Starbucks, no, or go to some restaurant that has it, no. And on your phone, no, you open it up, <coughs> and it automatically downloads all the materials or the data into the phone, no. And uh, it uses quite. I it makes use of a lot of HTML. And then you can turn off your Wi-Fi, go home. And when you open it, it, everything will still be there. So you can work on it uh, offline. So I'm going like, wow, that's cool. No? So you don't have to be online all the time. It's great. <laughs> so I said, OK, I'm going to try and find a way no, to work this out. Because I knew it requires coding. And I can't code for my life. You know, the last time I wrote something from scratch on a computer was a D-based database back in the 90s for our library. You know? So <coughs> since I can't code, I tried to go on these online web builders. You know? Apparently, there are several. But then I got quite queasy about security. And uh, I said, no, nah, no. Nah. Maybe I can look for an app. You know? a real standalone app to do this. Uh, thankfully, there I found one, no? and I downloaded it. It wasn't cheap. No? But since, you know, I, I feel like in a, I'm in a race for time. No? So I paid for it. <laughs> and I sat down with it starting yesterday. No? Now, this is the program. Let me show you the program. Um, so this is the app, and oh boy, it suddenly started raining. <coughs> okay, this is the app. It's called Thorium Builder. Now this is supposed to be a simulation of your phone, you know? <coughs> and so what you do is each element, little element here, has to be put in. Like for example, you can put in a text link. You can put in a container that you can put anything in. Uh, you can put in, for example, an image, you know, which I put in there. Um, you can put, uh, what's that, a button row. They call it a button row, which was what I put here. You, know. <coughs> you can put in a paragraph, which is what I put in here in the welcome screen. So <coughs> here I have several features here. That's going to be inside. I have announcements, a calendar, a Facebook group. Because uh, I already I already opened a private Facebook group for my classes. It's all ready to go. I have an e-group for my classes. Assignments, I have to figure it out how to 
do this one yet. Readings, yeah, I have to convert all my readings into HTML first. Images, I already have some images. They're over here in another page. Um, there. And I'll show you how they render later. Oh. <coughs> and then, what I got here? I got the media meetings. This should be a link to either Google or uh, Google Meet or uh, Zoom in case I ever decide to use it. Uh, reflection paper submission, I have to figure out how that works first. And then here in the bottom, there's an email that will automatically open the link in the email <coughs> app of the phone with my address on it so that uh, they can email me whenever they want. No. Now, um, this also has a simulator, so I can run the app and <laughs> it says a, a pretend phone will come out. No. So this is what the page is going to look like. And like, for example, if I want to open the calendar, to simulate how to open the calendar. Right? So I have two entries here already. The classes start and uh, one, my first micro lecture over there. Um, I got, um, yeah, I got some images in already. So it's, it's just like a website that you could start off with Wix, no? So you can open up an image, zoom into it, you know, move it around, you know, uh, go to the next image, look at that too, go to the next image, you know, move it around and close and all that sort of stuff and kind of go back. And uh, yeah, that's, um, I got media here too. I got one video. No, that's actually inside the app. That's not a link. No, it's inside the app already. So I don't know how much space that's going to consume, but uh, well, we'll work that out later. Okay. So that's the simulation. <coughs> and you can check out what it looks like in, oh, in an iPad. No. So basically, it should look very similar on an iPad. The same features, the same front page, you know, the same calendar, you know, also work, uh, the same images, same thing. Okay. And so, <coughs> well, that's how I've been spending my past what? The past two days. <laughs> Actually, I got this app on Monday late afternoon. No. And then I worked on it yesterday. I tried to learn it yesterday. And then I worked on it a little more this morning. And uh, <coughs> I'm trying to get as much done on this, on this app. So I have something present in our next meeting this coming up this weekend, no? <coughs> so that people can make comments. And uh, I hope someone can help me with cleaning up the code because I know it's probably going to be a mess. No? <coughs> it's going to take a lot of work. No? But as I said earlier, I survived Final Cut Pro and I survived OBS, so I guess I can survive this one. <laughs> Although it's kind of, I, I'm kind of feeling the pressure already. It's, kind of, it's like a race for time. No. But yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to make it now. So I got to get back to work. <laughs> okay. So I'll see you in a few days, maybe after we've, had our <coughs> after we've had our second meeting and I can get some feedback on the kind of stuff we've been doing, I've been doing. Okay. So again, until then, <coughs> hang in there. No, I'll be back. Bye.